so Robert uh, makes this stand and uh, he refuses to uh, relent and he intends for himself and the horses to uh, be free and as uh, Robert says uh, Mickle uh, announces or commands him he says we shall have you out of there I tell you do not doubt me I shall have you even though you kill me um, so he intends to get Robert out and arrest him and then Robert refuses and Robert says uh, we shall not be taken so this kind of this little line is very significant in relation to how Robert sees himself and the horses uh, unified uh, together but it was the we that doomed him so on page 199 it was the we that doomed him to Mickle it signified that Robert had an accomplice maybe more than one Mickle thought he knew how to get them out and this is when he instructs Mickle and inst instructs the other men to set fire to the roof uh, so Robert intends that, uh, or his intention is to say that we, the horses, and himself will not be taken, but Mickle doesn't understand him, um, and he assumes that Robert is acting with other accomplices, other human accomplices, not horses, uh, so he sets fire to the barn, and this is what dooms uh, Robert and the horses. Uh, so he is badly burned in this uh, instance. The horses here are very symbolic though. Uh, the fact that Robert aligns himself with the horses, they are sort of a representation of his uh, freedom. And um, they've been associated with sexuality in the novel, with freedom, with his own sense of identity. Um, so you can interpret them in a lot of different ways, uh, and he, the, the line, shall, we shall not be taken, is also very important in regards to what he's experienced in the novel. Uh, throughout, we've seen how Robert has become uh, used, and um, he was physically assaulted, so physically taken in a way, and here is his attempt to challenge the military system and everything that it stands for and really assert himself and his identity so he's really um, asserting uh, who he is and what he stands for in this moment and it goes against everything that the military also seems to represent and so Robert is asserting his freedom and he's asserting his independence and his autonomy and his individuality in this moment. So really it's a very symbolic gesture that he, uh, in, in his refusal to give up and uh, in his sort of union, united front uh, with the horses and himself together. And then in the end, it is a tragic fate. Uh, Robert is badly burned and then he is arrested uh, for treason and viewed as a traitor to the military um, and this is where his reputation is sort of uh, fully formed and there's a lot of different interpretations of what happened um, but in this instance is this is the infamous moment where uh, those who remember Robert uh, this is his defining moment as a character right this is where he stands up for what he believes in and some view him as being very heroic in this moment and showing his compassion um, whereas others view him as a madman who is irrational and a traitor in some instances uh, so he's viewed as a villain uh, so that he does occupy this kind of gray area in terms of right or wrong uh, is what he did right morally um, so I'll be interested to see or hear uh, your point of views, your interpretations of Robert's um, actions at this moment, whether you think what he did was right or wrong. Uh, so I'll post that question to the discussion boards and you guys can sort of weigh in on whether you view Robert as uh, doing the right thing in this moment um, and understanding him, maybe his motivations for doing uh, this act. So uh, one of the last uh, scenes of the novel is the transcript um, 
of the interview with Marian Turner. Uh, so she's another a woman who survived and who knew Robert quite intimately. Uh, she was his nurse after he had been badly burned after this um, sort of shootout at the barn. And she cared for him um, during these moments when he was being uh, held uh, by uh, a guard. He had an armed guard uh, beside him and uh, military police because they did view him as a traitor. And she felt more sympathy towards him. Um, and you remember early on in the novel, uh, she was the one who viewed Robert as un homme unique, right? A unique man, a hero. And uh, she believed what he did was heroic. So she has more sympathy for him than some of the others. And then she confesses, she says, I wanted to help him die because he is so badly burnt and he cannot speak very uh, much, um, but and it was clear he was in pain. And then her, uh, as a nurse, she wants to do all she can to help him and put him out of his misery. Um, and then she offers this to him on page 195. She says, I will help you if you want me to. And I knew he understood because he said, not yet, not yet. Do you see? He might have said no. He might have said never. He might have said yes. But he said not yet. There in those two words, in a nutshell, you have the essence of Robert Ross and perhaps the essence of what it is to be alive. Not yet has been my motto ever since, and here I am. So we have uh, another sort of glimpse into Robert's character and the significance of those words, not yet. Uh, so he sees possibility still in life, I guess, uh, depending on how you interpret those words. It's kind of ambiguous again. Um, but I think she sees an essence of who Robert Ross is in those two words. Uh, perhaps it's his endurance, his resilience to not give up. Um, even while, though he's badly burned, he still appreciates the life that he has. And he's not willing to give that up yet, so he's willing to fight for life still. Um, perhaps it's also, you know, he he doesn't say never, he doesn't say no, so he's not absolute, he sees possibilities. Um, it's not a black and white worldview for him. Uh, he sees uh, something else in between there, so he exists sort of in this uh, limbo. And I think he does. He's sort of motivated to live still. So Robert Ross, the essence of what it means to be alive, the essence of Robert Ross is the fact that he is resilient and does not give up and uh, keeps enduring hardship uh, and striving for more. And Marion Turner saw this, saw this in Robert and views him as uh, a survivor, somebody who fights and struggles to stay alive and somebody who loves life regardless of how he's been treated or mistreated or abused um, by the military or by uh, this skewed sense of justice that tries him as a criminal. Uh, she views him as unique and heroic and she has real empathy for him. So I think as readers we are sort of placed in a position where we also empathize with uh, what he's been through and what he's done and we understand it more because we have this portrait of who he is and what he endured, um, how he was a victim of the system and then how he became sort of violent and enraged against it and sought uh, to, you know, uh, make change and transform uh, and stand up for what he believed in. And then the end of the novel, uh, we have some other glimpses of what occurs uh, following that. Uh, he went, he returned to uh, St. Aubyn's for convalescent uh, treatments. So he's back with the Dorsey family. And Barbara Dorsey's there again, uh, paid him his one visit, and then she has moved on to the new man in her life, Lieutenant Col uh, Colonel Albert Rittenhouse. So she's moved on, and then it's Juliet Dorsey, the younger uh, sister, who uh, 
uh, helped him recover and helped him uh, spend sort of the last years uh, with Robert. Um, so she rarely left his side as he recovered from his burns. This is 195. So she was the one who uh, sort of tended to him uh, and stood by his side uh, through his last years. And then uh, on page 196, he died in 1922. The war ended in 1918. Uh, he was not quite 26 years old, so still very young. There's a photograph of Robert and Juliet taken about a year before his death. He wears a close-fitting cap, rather like a toque pulled down over his ears. He has no eyebrows. His nose is dif disfigured and bent, and his face is a mass of scar tissue. Juliet is looking up at him, speaking, and Robert is looking directly at the camera. He is holding Juliet's hand, and he is smiling. Mr. Ross was the only member of his family who came to see him buried. Um, on his gravestone, uh, Juliet had inscribed, Earth and air and fire and water, Robert Ross. So in that last instance, the f I think it's sort of, um, you know, if you could have a happy ending for this novel, it's sort of a happy ending in the sense he still dies young, but there is some measure of, um, you know, that he's, he's stood, he stand, or he stood up for himself. He challenged the system that he didn't, he no longer believed in. And even, uh, if, Others view him as, you know, a uh, traitor. Um, Juliet uh, has, you know, views him as a hero, and here he is smiling, uh, standing uh, in this photograph. So there's some measure that he is injured and uh, made it through. And uh, the words on his tombstone are also sort of a representation of all that he's endured and how closely uh, tied with nature. Uh, his character is and how he's endured every aspect of life um, and all those elements that are part of Finley's imagery around um, Robert's struggles, so earth and air and fire and water, all those elements that make up a life. And then we have a couple of instances as well, the epilogue. Uh, these are just sort of photographs that are meaningful to our narrator who once again is, just to reiterate, he was compiling um, and trying to figure out who Robert Ross is. So the epilogue is a couple of photographs of Robert that he views as significant. There's one where Robert, um, Robert is holding uh, a tiny object and it's the skull of some small animal. And then the last image is one of Robert and Rowena, uh, page 198. The archivist closes her book. She stares into time with her hair falling forward. So our narrator is the archivist, or not the, the person who is uh, recording or trying to find through the archives uh, evidence of who Robert Ross is. Um, so you're the, the narrator So our narrator is going through all of these remnants of Robert Ross's life and looking at whatever's left, all the letters and photographs and all the news stories and everything that compiles uh, Robert Ross's life. And then the last photograph that they look at is a photograph of Robert and Rowena with Meg the horse. And then on the back it says, look, you can see our breath. Uh, so I think this final image is again helps us to remember who Robert was prior to this experience of the wars which changed him dramatically uh, not only physically scarring him uh, but psychologically everything he's gone through uh, how he's been victimized and dehumanized and objectified and all that stuff that really um, tried to ki kill his spirit uh, but he endured in the sense that he was able to um, celebrate life and he finally stood up for who he was and embraced uh, some part of himself that um, that was sort of slowly being killed uh, in the wars. So that image of him and Rowena and Meg is very important and symbolic and sort of ties things together again. So that's how 
we should hold Robert's memory in our minds, uh, that image of him with Rowena and Meg, so the things that he loved.